Well, welcome everyone. We want to welcome everybody that is watching online this morning to Grace United Methodist Church. And we're glad you're with us, those that are watching online, those that are here. And if you notice that I don't look like Bev. <laughs> and some people say thanks, that's a good thing. But, uh, but Bev is on vacation, and we're grateful that Steve Stroh is back with us to complete his third in a series of uh, Fruits of the Spirit. So we'll get the final, final, final emphasis today. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the many blessings that you have given us. And we ask that your Holy Spirit be prevalent in this service this morning. We just ask that you give us ears to hear and hearts to receive as Steve brings your word to your people this morning. Father, we just ask that you do what you do best and be a part of this service and we'll give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Let's now prepare our hearts as Jenny plays the prelude. Man, thanks, Jenny. Isn't it a blessing to have young people serve in our church? Uh, we appreciate what they do, the acolytes, and uh, it, it, it's, it's very much appreciated. How many remember last week I told the story of the gentle persuasion where you take a pie to your neighbor and you love them till they ask you why? Well, I want to thank my neighbor <laughs> for, for bringing me a pie and whipped cream to go with it. So yeah, Sue brought me a pie the other day. I'm sitting there with three dogs watching TV and the doorbell rings. Of course, the dogs go ballistic and Sue hands a pie in through the door. Here's your whipped cream. So thank, so thank you very much, Sue, I appreciate it. So let's enter into our time of praise and worship this morning and let's just focus on the Lord this morning. Let's stand as we sing Waymaker because he is here this morning. He's moving in our midst and he's working in this place. You are here moving in our midst. I worship in this 
That is who you are. That is who you are. 
Children can come for children's chat. I have to sit. Hey, how you doing? So, do you remember what the fruit of the Spirit is? What we've talked about the past few times? You can turn around and look at that sign back there. You, 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 you're allowed to chill a bit. Yeah, yeah. And as I was looking at that, because there's kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. I got thinking, what does N-E-S-S mean? So, of course, I had my phone, so I Googled it. I said, I went, what does N-E-S-S at the end of a word mean? Because I didn't even know what that was called, and I found out it's called a suffix. And if there's any teachers out here, they'll probably correct me on this, because apparently I didn't pay attention in English, but I didn't know that was a suffix. I thought a prefix, but that goes before. So yeah, so I said, why don't they just say kind, good, faithful, and gentle? But, and I found out, have my little card here. Ness means it's a state, it's a condition of, a quality, a degree of goodness. You didn't know he's going to get school lessons here, here today, did you? Like, something is red, but what does redness mean? Yeah, quality of being red, state of being red. And what other things? Because you can be happy, but happiness. That's showing somebody a state of being happy, right? Mm -hmm. And then we've all been sad. You can be sadness, you know. You, you can say you're sad, but it's just people will notice. And I, and I made my own notes, hopefully they're right. How do others know, like an outward sign, that you are, you know, happy or sad or anybody in here ever silly? Yeah, silliness, or something soft, you know, like your pillow, or your blanket, the softness of it. How about hard? Anybody ever fell and hurt themselves on the concrete? It's hard. It has hardness, yeah. And I got thinking, well, what is, if we want to be kind and good and faithful and gentle, you know, the people, they see that. You know, they want to see that kindness in us. And that's something, that's your outward, what you can show people. You can show people that you are good. You can show people that you're faithful and that you're gentle and, and all that stuff. So I just got thinking, you know, that that ness is just a cool word. And can you think of any other words that end in N-E-S-S? I couldn't, but maybe you guys do. Any, any emotions, any feelings you guys have? Madness. What? Madness. Madness? Yeah, huh? madness. That's tiredness. What? Tiredness. Yeah, 
That's good. Yeah, that, 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 that's good stuff. It's just one of those words. And these are things you learn as you get older. I don't know when they start teaching all this different things with English, you know, and all that. But, but, but it's just cool that those, the ending of the before word, when they add it to it, it just adds, adds, adds a little, little different meaning to it. So as you go out, you know, you think about that, how you can be, show kindness to others, how you can be good, show goodness to others. Faithfulness is just, you know, to your family and your friends. And your God, of course, and then gentleness is a real important one when you're at school every day to show that to your classmates and your teachers and even those people that might be mean to you and might not be very nice and, you know, just show them, show them all them things. And it's one of those things as you show it to them, they will show it back to you and show it to others. So it's just one of those things that's kind of like a snowball rolling down a hill. It just picks up, picks up more snow and picks up more speed, okay? Cool. Hey, can I say a prayer for you people? Dear God, I just thank you for these young people here, and I just uh, pray as they go throughout their day and they go into school and whatever sports or activities they're involved in, that they just continue to show all these fruit of the Spirit. And just uh, we know there's a lot of words that end in N-E-S-S that are, that are not very good, and uh, the world may, uh, may, may glorify no, but we, we know that the things that you want us to be, you want us to be good goodness and kindness and gentleness and faithfulness and uh, you want us to be happy lord and you want us to just uh um show show our love to everybody we come in contact with lord and i pray for each and every one of these students that they just show that throughout their day and throughout their week and uh, just make this world a whole lot better place we love you lord and we ask all these things in your name amen thank you It's time now to share our joys and concerns. I have a few that was uh, submitted, and um, let me share them with you. We have an individual uh, that needs prayer. Only 10% of their heart is currently working. So tomorrow they will be having heart surgery, hopefully to correct that problem. So we'll ask for prayers for that. Uh, pray for an individual that is in stage four breast cancer. Pray for that, them, that individual. We have a couple that is expecting their second child, so let's pray for that as that, um, that process moves along. But we also have two couples that we need to lift in prayer because they have lost a baby due to miscarriage. And that's sometimes that's a difficult thing to deal with. So let's pray for that individual. Austin Hertenstein. We'll lift him up in prayer because he has an uncertain future as he has just um, graduated boot camp. So in the midst of all the turmoil that's taking place in the wor world, he definitely needs to be coveted and covered in prayer. Um, I, as a, I, let's pray for a person who recently fell due to a stroke and she broke her hip. So we'll lift that individual up as well. And Tony Beener asks us to continue to pray for her grandchildren. And we'll, we'll as always, keep our community in prayer, uh, our country in prayer, and our world in prayer. Yes, you in the back. I don't know if those people online were able to catch that. We need to lift an individual up uh, of, of the family of an indiv person that actually hit somebody in Mercer County, and that person died. So we'll lift up the family. Pardon me? 77-year-old man was hit by a car and killed in Mercer County. So we'll pray for his family and also the the person that was happening in that vehicle that did that. Yeah. Yes. 
night with my cousin, Lindsay. She will be having brain surgery for early Friday morning. And she um, wanted to contact me. She's like, these people in your church, they sent me a card? She's like, I've never heard of such a thing. She's like, they are so amazing. And I'm like, yes, they are. So uh, she wanted me to make sure she thanked everyone. And again, we encourage you that as you enter into our sanctuary to always take a glance over to the desk and see if there's cards that need to be signed. Um, that card ministry that Becky Ballinger does, it means so much. Just by signing your name and saying, we'll pray for you, that means so much to an individual, just as Karen said. Never heard of such a thing. Well... That's just how Grace United Methodist Church rolls. We, we, that's how we roll. We reach out. We move the love of Jesus along in any way that we can. So um, hopefully for those that are here and watching online, we, we are planning a cow movement <laughs> on Thursday. We don't know where we're going to be moving to, but that's going to be in the works, and I'm sure by that time Bev will be back, and she will be reaching out, and so, but uh, that's what we're going to have, so. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, first of all, I come before you, and I ask you to cleanse my heart. I ask you to purify my heart. I ask you to forgive me of any sin that will keep me from reaching your kingdom. Father, your word says that you do not hear the prayer of a sinner. So I ask as we come before you, Lord, that we confess our sins before you, that we can stand righteous before, before you with a pure heart. Father, you are a great God. You are a loving God. You care for us individually. You know us by name. And Father, when we rejoice, you rejoice. And when we hurt, you hurt. And Father, we have some concerns that we want to lift up before you and Lord we're going to bring them to you this morning and we're going to lay them at the foot of the cross and Lord before I even mention one of these requests your angels are already moving they're already being sent to do what you are asking them to do Father we know the circumstances but you know the details You know the details. You know the hearts. You know their hurts. You know their joys. You know their desires. You, need, you know when they need to be lifted up. You know when they need to be comforted. You know when we need to laugh. So, Father, I pray for these individuals that are dealing with physical illnesses this morning, Lord. For the individual that is having heart surgery tomorrow, Lord. For the individual that is facing stage four breast cancer, Lord, I'm just praying now that your Holy Spirit move. Now, Father, in this surgery tomorrow and whatever procedures down the road for the individual with the breast cancer, Lord, that you give the doctors wisdom. You guide their hands. You make their hands steady. Everybody that is in that room in that procedure, Lord, I ask that you to cover in your blood. And I pray for the individual, Lord, these two individuals that you make your presence known. Whatever the situation they may be facing, Lord, that you make your presence known whatever that looks like. 
It may be a card to lift up and encourage. It may be a phone call from a family or friend to encourage them, to let them know we're thinking about them and that we're praying for them. Father, we celebrate these individuals that are expecting babies, Lord. What a, what a joyous celebration it is. We pray that their pregnancies go normal and that they bring these babies into this world healthy. But on the other side of that coin, Lord, are these two families that have lost children due to miscarriages. And Father, we know the hurt and the pain that they may be dealing with. And again, I ask that you just intervene. Just, just be with them, Lord. Just be with them. We pray for Austin Hurtenstein, Lord, and celebrating his graduation from boot camp. What a joyous celebration. And we as a congregation uh, uh, thank him for his call to service to this country to protect our freedom. But Father, I ask as he moves forward from this day on, Lord, that you be with him. Father, just surround him with your protection your peace, your guidance. Give him wisdom, Lord. We thank you again for his service. Lord, we pray for Karen's request to this individual that is having brain surgery. Again, we pray for the doctors, Lord, to just have wisdom and knowledge. Give them clarity of sight. Give them steadiness of hand that as they go in to do this procedure, Lord, that it is flawless and that they can do what needs to be done without complication and Father we ask for a speedy healing as well we pray for this individual that had, to, had a stroke and has fallen and the result of that fall is that she broke her hip so Lord we just ask again that you be with her Give her peace. Ease the pain, Lord, until it is able to be, be taken care of and whatever that might look like, Lord, we just ask that you be with her. Tony, we pray for Tony Beaner, and she wants to be that hedge and fill the gap between you and her grandchildren, Lord. Father, we ask that you protect them and guide them. Father, if they don't know you, Lord, I just pray that you do whatever you have to do to bring them into the kingdom. Sometimes it takes us to hit rock bottom before we realize that we need a Savior. Sometimes we don't. But Father, I just ask that you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, draw them into your kingdom whatever that looks like. Father, we pray for this, this nation. We pray for our city and our administrators, our schools, administrations, and staff. Father, we just ask that you just be with them as they continuously, each and every day, make decisions that affect other people. And so, Father, I ask that as these decisions are being made, that, that they are well received. Because, Lord, when you're in a, a situation such as politics or even a member of our school administrations, the decisions that you make, 50% of them, the people are not going to like what the decision you make. But Father, we just ask that your Holy Spirit just covet them. Let them seek your face. Because your word said, if my people who are called by my name 
All we need to do is humble ourselves. So many people think they have all the answers, and they're not afraid to tell you. But Father, where is humility in this country? Where is humility? Where is, where is it where somebody says, I was wrong, forgive me? And we just humble ourselves and pray. And we seek your face. Turn from our wicked ways. You will hear our prayer and heal our land. It's that simple. It's that simple. So, Father, again, we just ask that you just move in this place. Move in these prayer requests, the celebrations of life, and those that are dealing with physical ailments and need a healing touch. Just move. Just move. Jesus, I ask, just show up. Just show up, and you will, because you're standing at the door, and all we have to do is let you in, and there you are. You've showed up. Father, we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Thank you, Joe. All right. Well, you ready to wrap this series up? Sure. Like they, they, y- y'all showed up, so a, you must want to hear, hear, how, hear how it turns out. All right. The scripture we've been studying is uh, Galatians 5.22. I'm just going to read... It's right, uh, right there on the board, but you should have it memorized by now, huh? But, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And uh, I just want to give a quick, quick, quick review on all that. That, that is the fruit of the Spirit uh, that, that we've talked about. And um, as we've, uh, you know, we, we, we went, went over the first, first three of them with the love Love kind of ties it all in, 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 in together. That was, that, that was our starting point. I believe God made that, made that first because without love, you really can't do, can't, can't do in, anything else. And uh, I want to go find my verses here. And, and, and they talked about fruit. I'm going to re- re- read from Matthew again, Matthew 17 to 20. A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good t- tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people, people by, by, by their actions. So like I said, we, talk, we, we, we talked about love, and... And I want to just hit on that first, for, first for, for a little bit here, because like I said, it, it t- ties in everything else. And I'm going to go to uh, 1 Corinthians 13:13, 13, 13. and I know this is a, uh, it's, it, 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 it's, it's kind of like that love chapter, you know, when you hear it, hear, hear it at every wedding, but at the end there, it says, "And now these three remain: faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love." And then, um, but the idea, in order to produce those fruit, we, fruit, we have to stay connected, connected, connected to God. And um, there's there, there's several good passages in, in in the Bible how how that looks, what that looks like. And I'm going to go back to Psalms, Psalm number one, blessed verses one through three. 
Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does pro prospers. And the prophet Jeremiah said something very similar to that. Jeremiah 17, 7 to 8. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by water and send out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in the year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. And, and when I read, read those, it, it kind of got me that, um, you know, we're supposed to be planted by streams of water so we can get to water, which is, which is you know, the word, of, the word of the Lord. But we can choose where we want to be planted. And that's the one thing that got me in this. You know, we can plant ourselves by streams of living water, which would be stay close to God, stay in his, stay in his words, stay in his company of fellow believers. Uh, we can plant ourselves in the middle of the desert somewhere or somewhere away, away from everybody, be, be by ourselves. So that kind of really got me that, you know, the only way we're going to grow and be able to produce fruit is by being, being close, close to Jesus and staying stay in, in, in his word. And then, um, then I'm going to go, go to John now. And this is uh, John, John 15, and it talks about the vine and the branches. So I'm going to read John 15, verses 9 to 17. And this again talks about Christ's love. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that you may, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, Lo love each other. And as I read that, it's, uh, and the key, key point in there, and in verse 16 it says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And in the Old, Old Testament days, most young boys, they wanted to learn from a rabbi. And what they did, they, they chose the rabbi they wanted to learn from, and they go ask them if they, if, if they could be a part of their little gang, I guess. But this, it says that all the disciples, and you think about that, they didn't, none of them came to Jesus and asked to follow him. You know, Simon and his brother were fishing, and Jesus came to them and said, hey, come, come and follow me. Matthew was in the tax collector's booth, and he said, come. It doesn't say about a, 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 a lot of the other ones, but Jesus went and found them, and why he picked that bunch, nobody knows. I mean, they were just ordinary, everyday people, but Jesus went and found them and chose them, and just like us. He chose each of us, um, and I don't know, maybe this, a lot of us don't, when we're born, when maybe we're five years old, we say, man, I'm going to choose to follow Jesus today. You know, a lot of times that Jesus keeps putting stuff on our hearts and then and use other people to influence us, and, and then we choose to follow Jesus. But then an, a, another thing that got me at the end, it said, then, and that's why it's a great word in the Bible, then the Father will give you whatever you ask. And, and I know prayer is so important, we need to pray for things, but a lot of times we pray, we want to we wanna bear fruit, we pray for that, or we pray that we want to do things for other people, we pray that God gives us all this stuff. But it says here, he chose us, we need to go bear fruit, then whatever we ask of him, he, he will give to us. And that kind of, you know, kind of, I, it, it seemed kind of crazy, because I was thinking, man, no, I'm supposed to pray, 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 and then go do. But Jesus is saying, no, go do something, you know, get out and do it, and then, you know, then, then, I, then I would start giving to you, kind of like, you know, show me, show me that you would go out and bear, bear fruit, and that kind of just, uh, 
it, it didn't make sense, but in, but in the worldly, <coughs> the, the, the worldly standards there. Um, <coughs> and then I'm going to go back to the beginning of uh, John 15, verses 1 and 2. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in, that, in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that bears fruit he prunes so that it would be even more fruitful. That pretty much says that if we don't bear fruit, you know, we're going to be cut off. We're going to be, it says in other places, we're going to be thrown fire. So bearing fruit is not like a suggestion. It's a command that we need to just bear fruit. And as we stated the other couple of times, it's not fruits where we get to pick and choose which fruit we want to bear and which one we feel like it. You know, we need to bear all the, all those fruit, <clears throat> but then that pruning stuff. I know you've heard stories on that. <clears throat> Nobody likes to be pruned because that's discipline. You know, I imagine those trees, if they could talk while we're cutting those old branches off, they'd probably be screaming and calling us names and stuff like that. I mean, you know, but <coughs> nobody likes that. You know, I mean, but, that, but, but that, that's what it takes because all of us, we have parts of us that aren't very productive, you know, in our life, you know. And, but I know with me, some of those things you hold on to and say, well, it'll get better or this is me how I am, this is what I like, so you hold on to it. But sometimes we have to, Either God will prune us, and sometimes we need, we, we need to just prune ourselves. <clears throat> but, but, but as we go on to those, you know, we talked about love. And then, and then the joy, and that's just that, that inner peace. No matter what's happening, or, 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 peace is the next one. I shouldn't say that, but it's just that inner, the, you know, joy that we're just, no matter what's happening, we got that joy that people can just see something about us that's different. That peace, no matter what's going on in our life, with our family, in the world, you know, that just doesn't seem to, seem to, uh, it, it may bother us, but we still have that, we, we just exude that peace. And then patience, as we all, l last month, that's probably the, one of the toughest ones, I know it is for me, you know, just having that patience where, you know, we just look out, you know, for each other's uh, faults there, and then kindness and goodness, are, you know, si similar, you know, as we talk to the kids, you know, be kind to other people. And then the goodness is kind of just take it to that extra level by do something, do, do, do something for somebody else. But now we'll get into the, uh, to, to, to the three we're going to close up with. Okay. If I can get my phone to work. Hey, it works. All right. Faithfulness is, is, is the first one of these, of these last three. And what that means, it's uh, the dictionary have faith, assurance, believe or belief, conviction of the truth of anything, conviction, divine things, persuasion, moral conviction, the character of one who can be relied on. And I like that last part, somebody you can, you, you, you know, rely on. If you're just, uh, and, and, and I took down my own, some of my own notes, you know, having faith in something, you know, being faithful to someone, someone or something. You know, talk about that in a marriage. You know, being be, being faithful to your spouse. You know, being faithful to your kids, and you know our school. You know, being faithful to St. Mary's Memorial High School. And then we all have those sports teams. Whether you're a Browns or a Bengals fan or Buckeyes or Notre Dame or somebody, it's amazing how much faith will show by how much money we spend on T-shirts and jerseys and tickets and stuff, stuff like that. But you're faithful no matter and. Most, if you're a real fan, a real faithful, no matter how they're doing, you're going to follow them and be faithful to that team. You know, you'll, I mean, you, you see people getting fights at games, you know, because somebody from Salina said something to somebody from St. Mary's, so then they're ready to throw it, throw it down. And, and I know sometimes we feel that about God, like, hey, he's not holding up his end of the bargain. You know, this, my, my life stinks, you know, things aren't going as good, but just to be faithful, um, you know, some of us are faithful to our job. You know, it's kind of like keeping promises. Um, and then I like the, this part. The ability to serve God faithfully through the years and through the temptations of life is not something we achieve by heroic virtue. It comes from the Spirit. You know, because we're going to have all these temptations and things that come with us. And, you know, sometimes we say, well, we'll just tough it out. We're, 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 we're bigger than this. We can, we can get through it. We can be faithful. But like it says, says here, it comes from the Spirit. And, it, and this is a great verse here, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And sometimes that's a tough part with following, you know, Christ. You know, we don't see a lot of, 
you know what what he what he's doing for us you know a lot of it is what's going to happen you know we're going to be in heaven we're, we're going to be with them but sometimes we're more of that society where we want everything right now we want to see it okay god you promised me this i want it now i i i, I want it here but those things that we don't see that, that are going to come in the future that if we just stay and that's what faithful is it kind of ties in with persistence too and 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 the idea and this is from a guy uh, barclay the idea is that the spirit of god works faithfulness in us both to god and to people it is the characteristics of a man who is who is reliable there's another one just somebody be, being reliable and then there's a couple other stories one of them from matthews one of them from mark and i know one of them i shared shared a couple of years ago about those guys that bought a paralyzed man to jesus you know one of them they went the story was that they lowered him through the roof and the other one they just brought it to him i imagine it's the same same story just different different uh, uh details and the key thing is there it wasn't the the guy's faith on the mat it was the guys that brought it to him they were faithful they wanted to get that guy healed so they did whatever it took so that, so they were faithful the seven here seeing their faith you know you, you know he healed them they they just had they just had that that faithfulness to him and then but god god is just faithful to us as you know that song we sang earlier you know talks about god god's faithfulness and the biggest the biggest example i can show of god's faithfulness is you know, after Adam and Eve sinned, you know, God promised that he would make the world right. You know, someday, sometime, you know, and just us being faithful through it. But God was faithful that, you know, he sent Jesus Christ to die. You know, that, that was his promise. He was faithful, kept that promise that gave us that way to, way, 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 way to heaven, a way, way to spend eternity in him. And that was a big sacrifice. So if he was faithful in that, we ought to be able to be faithful in, in anything that God God, God wants us to do. And then we'll move on to gentleness. And this is a, <clears throat> this is kind of a tough one in this day and age, especially, like I said, I do a lot of work with sports teams and stuff like that, and you bring up around a bunch of football players gentleness. <laughs> that isn't a big thing. or any. And I don't know if it's a guy thing or just anybody, but, you know, you see a, I got a, several grandsons and when they're out there playing there's not a whole lot of gentleness out there in the playground or in the in in, in the backyard but mildness of disposition now what's that gentleness of spirit humility as joe talked about earlier it's in short supply and meekness and the thing with meekness everybody thinks that's weakness you know if you're meek if you're gentle you're a yeah that that isn't what a guy should be that isn't what an athlete should be it's not what we should be you know we're supposed to be you know, we're Americans. We're supposed to be tough. We take care of ourselves. We, we, we don't need anybody else. But meekness is, is, is a weakness. And this is a quote from Mother Teresa. Be kind to each other. It is better to commit faults with gentleness than to work miracles with unkindness. Hmm. Never heard that, so yeah. And then, and, and then here in uh, Galatians. Dear brothers and sisters, and the Bible talks about, you know, gentleness and kindness and all this man a whole lot it's amazing dear brothers and sisters if any if another believer is overcome by some sin you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back into the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation you, you, yourself so it talks about that as we all we've all been there we've all been on both sides of that coin you know where we've been fallen and we went and uh and I used to be more in-your-face type of guy when I first got saved, you know. I was, I was just amazed that how could somebody who says they know Christ do these stupid things, you know. And I'd be in their face a little bit. And, but that was more my arrogance. I didn't have, didn't, did, didn't have the humility, but that gentle part because, I, you know, I wasn't brought up to be a gentle, a gentle person. Um, but gently and humbly, that, those are two words that we don't like to hear. Um, get that person because we want well we want him now we said hey i told you this is how you should do it it goes back to patience i think so do it now i told you that this is how uh, that's how you do it but be care but be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself and then uh by saint francis de sales another quote nothing is so strong as gentleness nothing so gentle as real strength man 
And then Ephesians 4, 2 talks about that. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. And, that's, and we want people to make allowances for our faults, but sometimes we don't want to make allowance, allowance for their faults. And then 2 Timothy, a couple more here. 2 Timothy 2, 25. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts and they will learn the truth. In Philippians 4, 4 to 5. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evidence to all. The Lord is near. And that's a question I have to ask myself as I talk to people. You know, I mean, I got my grandkids. I'm gentle to them. Sometimes I'm gentle to my wife. But there's people out in the world that I run into, I, I look back. Maybe I said something harsh to them. I was late for something or, you know, they, like yesterday it happened. I had to catch myself. I went to the gas station, put gas in my car, wanted a receipt, but said, clerk has receipt. And I'm thinking, man, it's right here. Why do I have to go inside and get this? So I went in. I was kind of huffy, and I went in. I had to take a deep breath and say, instead of saying, why do I have a receipt out here? Okay, could you please give me a receipt? I had that, you know, that, that choice to make. I think, man, did, how often do I do that and don't catch myself? You know, not being gentle, not being humble, not, not just, you know, it's easy to say, you, 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 you know, you're following Christ, but just to live that out, which leads perfectly, I hope. Is that called a segue? Self-control. We almost skip patient. We may skip the self-control one. This week. How does that sound? And... And as I was looking at this, love is at the beginning because you have to have love to have everything. But it's funny how they put self-control last. I think it's a kind of bookend, you know, because, man, self-control, temperance, the virtue of one who masters his desires and passions. Wow. And I, I'm going to yeah, re read a few verses here. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying his power, have nothing to do with, with, with such people. Wow. And that, and that ties real close in, 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 into what Galatians says right, right before the fruit of the Spirit, where it says the acts of a sinful nature are in, 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 in a list in which, it, which is similar to those. And this is a quote by Ben Franklin. If passion drives you, let reason hold the reins. Because, you know, we all, we're all passionate. We look back, I mean, we talked earlier about sports. There's things we're passionate about. You know, there's things we, we just love that, that we'll, go, we'll, we'll go crazy about it. Um, but that, you know, just, just having, have, have, having that self-control. And, and, and I'll read one more here from 1 Peter 1, 5-8. And I like how this kind of stair, stair steps up, you know, where one lead, that leads to the other. There, there, there's several verses in the Bible about different things where it starts out with one thing. If you do this, you get this, you get this, you get this. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in, in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, which goes, go, go, goes back to the fruit. And um, and then, and, 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 and then I think of that, that self-control, and, and, I, and, and I hope this comes out right, but... Um, Sometimes I think people want think God will do everything for us. You know that all we have to do is I mean, we surrender to Him, 
He has the power to do everything, but he should make everything easy for us. He should do everything. You know, every, you know we should just let him, and I know we want to let him have, have, have control in our life, but I, but I have this bracelet here, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And, 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 and I like that, but it doesn't say, I can do all things, or Christ would do all things th through me. That, 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 that makes sense. I says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. He gives us the strength to do it, but it's our, that's what our self-control is. It's our choice. You know, if we want, if we want to do it, and then, um, You know, we need to take we need to take 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 that responsibility in all these. You know, with the love, the joy, the peace, everything else. Um, and I think sometimes we give Satan too much, too much control, too much authority, too much power. Too like if things are going bad, that it's all Satan's fault. Satan made me do it. You know, the temptations. And I I wrote this here. You know, God will test us. Satan will tempt us. You know, God te it's just like at school. You know, you learn something for a couple of weeks, you take a test. You either, if you applied what you learn, you'll do well on the test. If you don't, you'll fail. You may get a retest. Re re but some things, and I know I look back on it, I wasn't real good at tests, but some of those things I learned back then, I remember now. I probably blew it on the test, but at least, you know, you, 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 know, you do that. Those things that you learn, Satan's the one that tempts us. He's the one that puts those things in front of us that are bad. Or, you know that we that we sh that we shouldn't do, but a test is something to make you better, to get a good grade on it, to advance. You know, you pass a test when you're ninth grader, you you you, you go to tenth grade, and that's what God's test. You know, He keeps testing us to just get us better, better and stronger, and and and, and that's where self control comes in. And I'm going to go to First uh, Corinthians ten thirteen here, verse twelve and thirteen. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can stand up un un under it. And I go in there and said, you know, we, we've heard this, that God will only give us what we can handle. Um, but it said, tempted beyond what you can bear. And that's what we, beyond what you can bear, not what you, you, you will bear. I mean, we can, he won't give us more than, we can handle it, but it's up to us if we choose, if, 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 if we choose to handle it. It says not, not, not will, beyond what you will bear. You know, we just have to make that choice to bear it. And then in a way, at the end, it says provide a way out. We have that way out, but we don't always choose a way out. So it's like if you're going down the highway and there's a big wreck up ahead and you think there's going to be a delay or there's an exit ramp, you have a choice to make. You know, a way out is take the exit ramp and go around it. But sometimes we'll go in, get in traffic, and then complain about it. You know, so we have those way out. God will provide the way out, but that's part of going back to being by that stream of living water. If we're getting, getting fed from that stream, we can get, you, 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 you know, find that way out. So... Um, and I believe self-control is how you can do these, you know, how you can have that love. You know, I know we have the Holy Spirit in us, but just because we have it in us doesn't mean we're going to use it. You know, sometimes we, we, we may have it, but if we just keep that Holy Spirit inside of us, you know, that self-control, know when, know when to use it, when, when, when not to use it. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, now I'm going to get the part about the fruit. Now, And has anybody ever had, you know, different fruit that you've had and it looks good, but then when you take a bite out of it, it's kind of rotted, rotten or maybe bitter or sour or, you know, it, it's once you get up close. And then I've, I've had that with apples. Man, they look good on and then you bite into an apple and there's a little worm in there, or some bugs in there. You know, we've all had that and, you know, have, 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 have that with fruit. It looks good. Does that look pretty good? Back, that look good? Yeah. 
That look pretty good? See how far I can throw it to it. <laughs> who, who wants to do this one? Oh, oh. <laughs> one more, down the aisle. Those look good? Now, when they were up here, they didn't look too bad up here, did they? Did anybody think they were real or, or not? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was looking for fake fruit, and I thought it'd be pretty easy to find, but I went to Meyer, I went to Walmart, I went all over. You can't find fake fruit. The only ones we had were the little kitty ones down our basement that the kids used, and I thought if I stole their fruit. Oh, and I do want to the back, and I, I, I'm making an arrangement for our table, so, 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 so I need those. So, uh, but, so Lisa, she always does this to me. I say I need something, I can't find it, and next day Amazon brings it. So she'll, yeah. That, 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 that's amazing. So, but these are, and they look good, and I got thinking about how it ties in with this. You know, we may have the Holy Spirit in us, and like I said, the only way you get the Holy Spirit in you is accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and live, live by that. And we may, you know, have that love and that joy, and, may, and we may look good on the outside, and we may have that. We may have love, and the key word I want to go through is until. You know, until somebody really ticks us off and does something that's un, 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 unforgivable. You know, we may have this joy in our life until there's some devastating, like some of the prayer concerns, that, you know, something devastating happens, then it takes our joy away. We may have all the peace we want until this crazy world just gets crazier. And with everything else, the patience. I got a lot of patience until somebody just does something for the tenth time when I told them not to, so I'm not going to have it. And then we go on and on. I may have self-control until it's something, man, I really want to do and I really think would be need, need, need to do. So a lot of times I like this fruit. It looks good. It's plastic. I thought it would squeeze easy in this. But, but it's hollow. I should have brought a little saw in here and cut it out. These, this, this has nothing inside and some, and I think sometimes people can be lot, lot like that. They look good on the outside, and it talks about that, you know, the whitewashed tombs and different things in the Bible. Well, you know, the, the Pharisees were like that. But we just, uh, you know, there's just so much. We have to have something inside of us. And we can either have the world inside of us, or we can have the Holy Spirit of Jesus, uh, you know, and Jesus Christ, Christ inside of us. And, 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 and it's our choice because... Uh, yeah, you know, in, 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 in order to bear fruit, you know, we have to have, we have, have, have to have that spirit. So my prayer for you guys is just continue to bear fruit, and, you know, we just have to follow those. And this, and this is a great verse to read every day. Get up in the morning and read this. And, and I don't know, do a little test. Write it down. How did I do today loving people? How did I do today being joyful? How did I do being kind to people? How was my self, self-control? Some days will pass, some days we won't. But man, at, at least you know, because you don't know where you're going and how to get there, and that lets you know how you're, where, 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 where you're at and where, where you've been. So I just, uh, I'll, 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 I'll close in a prayer here, and I'll go around and collect my fruit and uh, get, get, get that back, okay? Dear God, I just uh, thank, th- thank you for the opportunity to, to, to share here at Grace. I just thank you for uh, uh, all these uh, Pe- people here and Lord, this uh, church is just doing d- doing some amazing things, and 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 I just thank you for that. I want to continue to pray for Bev as she's finished finishing up her schooling. I uh, just pray that she has she has, she has a blessed and a joyful time over the weekend. Uh, Lord, I just pray that we just uh, continue to just bear fruit. I uh, know that uh, we we have to do some pruning in our lives, Lord, but we just need to keep a. Uh, Keep uh, let, let, letting it grow and let other people people see it, Lord. And we know that uh, w- we are going to bear fruit. We are going to reproduce it, Lord. But if the kind of fruit we're, uh, we're, we're bearing isn't pleasing to you, Lord, that we can change it. Again, we love you and we ask all these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. We're going to close w- with a video here and then we're going to close with a blessing as we depart. But I want to just make one statement. The Bible tells us that we are to be fruit inspectors. You will know them by their fruit. So we can judge individuals by the fruit that they produce. We cannot and never shall judge their salvation. 
We cannot judge their salvation, but we can judge their fruit. Amen. We're going to close with a little video that we found online. You will love it. Clap if you want. Sing if you get I'm not going to sing, but it just ties this whole thing in. So, Emily, go ahead. As we, as we prepare to leave this morning. Father God, I just thank you for who you are. I thank you for the message that you brought forth through Steve this morning. I ask that as we depart here this morning and we go about our week, that we produce good fruit, that people will know us by the fruit that we produce. And as it's said in the song, they will only know that if you're living within us. So Father, I pray over these individuals as they go, keep them safe, give them a blessed week, and bring them back next week hungering and thirsting for your word. In Jesus' name, amen.